All right, let's take a quick look here at some real world examples of using this range mask slider that we have here. Um, all right, first example here, I'm, I'm using all photos basically that are in the extras folder here. Um, first example here is we have one where, you know, very, very underexposed, although the really bright parts of the photo um, aren't blown out back here. So we could go in here and maybe, you know, kind of punch up our exposure quite a bit. And then you can see, obviously, everything back here uh, starts to get really bright. So overall, the photo look, the exposure looks better, but everything in the back there gets really bright. Well, one of the things I would normally do is take my brush tool, um, bring the exposure down a little bit, and then you know, kind of zoom in and try to paint in that area back there and try to keep it, uh, keep it under control. So I'm not going to zoom in this time. I'm just going to bring my exposure and, uh, and my brush, and I'm just going to paint pretty haphazardly right along that area here and we'll bring it even we'll make it even a little bit darker maybe even bring those highlights down there we go okay so now I've brought a lot of that detail back there but in doing so I've already and also kind of gone in and and you know you could see it's it's really not very clean so again I could go in with a brush and I could try to get very very close and erase part of that area but it's going to be tough to get it perfect so that's where the range mask comes in we can go over here, turn this range mask on. Um, we have a luminance problem because everything is green. So I don't really want a color mask. Um, I want to do this more based on luminance. So I want to bring that luminance down. So what I can do is go to my range and tell Lightroom, hey, I, I only want you to apply this brush to the really bright parts. So what I would do is start to bring in the left side of that. And you can see what it starts doing there. Look at Keep an eye right over here. Where, see where the crosshair is over? Keep an eye in that area. You can see it goes from dark and it gets brighter and brighter. So it's basically restricting the range to only the really bright parts that I had painted over. Okay, Just like that. If I bring it in from the right, watch the, watch the, the highlights there. They're going to get super bright because I'm saying, hey, don't, don't worry about that area either, which is not what I want to do. But you can see, see they got really bright. So I've just restricted the range to the really bright parts. And then you kind of adjust the smoothness. This one's going to be, this one's not going to be quite as precise. You know, it's like, eh, you know, that's too, too little. That's over here is too much. So probably somewhere right in between. So if you hit my toggle switch, that's the before and that's the after. And you could always follow it up a little bit with the eraser, like hold down your option or alt key and maybe erase just a little bit. But you see, there's not even much to do because Lightroom's kind of already taking care of it for me. All right, let's continue on this path here. Let's say I'm gonna go over and uh, let's, let's add another adjustment here. So I'm gonna click on new. And let's say as an example, we want to, we want to bring down the exposure of the really bright parts of the water here. So I'm, again, I'm just going to haphazardly paint over the brighter stuff. And obviously, it's, it'd be impossible to really paint over all those bright spots there. So we can bring the exposure down. We can even bring the highlights down a little bit. I'm obviously, again, working in a larger area. So when you look at the, the before and after here, before and after, um, when you look at that area, it's, it's all getting dark. Again, that's a great place for the luminance range mask because now I can say, hey, don't worry about the dark stuff. I just want you to worry about those, those highlights, those bright areas on the water there. And again, that's before and that's after. Um, and then you can play around with your smoothness there. So there's a couple of examples on this one. Uh, let's take a look at an example on a portrait. So one of the things I did, because this is, again, in your, your extras file. So this is one of those ones that you practice along with. One of the things that I did is, is I artificially went into HSL and under the hue and under the saturation, I kind of boosted the reds in her face a little bit because she didn't have it, but I thought this was a really good example. You know, you ever see people sometimes just depending on situations, it could be color, uh, it could be the, the color and the lighting in the room, or it could be just sometimes people get stressed out when you take their picture and sometimes their face looks a little bit red. Well, let's go ahead and let's go grab our, uh, our, our radial filter here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a radial filter around her face. Like so. Because what we'd want to do is we'd want to reduce the saturation of the reds. And we, we don't want to try to do this perfectly. Or, and we could do it with a brush as well. I could just brush in over her face. 
Um, we want to reduce the saturation of the of the reds on there, but we don't want to reduce the eye color. Um, maybe you know certain makeup colors and whatnot could be jewelry, could be hair, could be you know, a lot of different things. We don't want to reduce the saturation of everything. So here I go, and let's uh, and let's zoom in here. So I'm going to go to two to one, so we can see what's going on. Um, I'm not going to bring the exposure down. What I'm going to do is, if you notice, my radial filter is actually being applied outside of the filter. So what I'm first going to do is come down here and click on invert, which is now applying it inside. All right, and then I can kind of tighten that up a little bit. So now it's being applied inside here. But instead of reducing the exposure, that was kind of just a visual cue to show you guys what's going on here. I'm going to bring that back to zero. I'm going to bring the saturation down. And so you can see, see how it's desaturating her face. Maybe we'll even spread that out a little bit. There we go. So see how it's desaturating her face? I obviously don't want to go down that far, so I'll, I'll back off. I'm going to go further than I should, though, because I want to be able to demonstrate what's going on here. So then I'm going to go, and now we can zoom in a little bit more. Now I'm going to go down here and turn on my color range mask. I'm going to take the little eyedropper, and now what I'm going to do is shift click. I'm going to click once on her forehead, and then I'll shift click over on her cheek, maybe on her other cheek, maybe down here on her chin. I think we can do five points, so maybe I'll get a spot right over here as well. So you can see now I've I've put down all these sample points. Now, it's still too much, so I'm gonna back this off, but now I can start to bring down the red in her face just by pulling that saturation down a little bit there, all right? And what I'm not doing is, is I'm keeping her eye color, I'm keeping any her lips, any jewelry, anything, her hair color, whatever it happens to be, I'm keeping all those colors, and I'm really just pulling down or affecting the color range that I had selected here, which is basically the skin tones um, in this example there. So that's one example. Another one would be, um, you know, one of the things we do is, uh, is I, I love dehaze. I'm gonna go to the graduated filter. I'll show you the last one here. Uh, I love dehaze, you know, maybe bring the exposure down a little bit and maybe crank up dehaze and, um, and just come over here and just kind of drag it right over the mountain. But the problem with dehaze is it always, especially for blue skies, it always kind of electrifies the blues. And I think it always does it too much. So what we can do is, you know, I crank up my dehaze. I think it's good dehazing for the mountain. I think it's just too much on the sky. So we come down here. Let's turn our range mask on. I'm going to turn it on to, let's go into, uh, what do we think here? So it it's probably, it's probably a combination of color and luminance. So let's give it a try. All right, let's go to luminance and see what happens here. Let's see when I bring in that luminance from the left, maybe I bring it in. Oh, there we go. I think that's actually, that's probably going to be where we land here because think about what's going on is the luminance of that sky is pretty bright up top here. And most of the crevices and the dark stuff, it's not the snow that I care about to add dehaze to. It's all these little crevices that it's really going to work on. So as I bring that luminance down, now I'm kind of, I'm kind of pulling back on that electrified sky and I'm just keeping the dehazing over the mountain. So that actually works really good. Let's give one more try. We can go over here to color and uh, I can go to my color eyedropper and click and then shift click and start to add a couple of those areas there. Yeah, you know. Not a huge fan of it. You can see it's missing. It's going to start to mess with a little bit of the blues up there. But hopefully that, that's kind of an example, almost a, a hybrid example, although I do think that the luminance is really where we would land on this one because the sky is pretty bright. So we can kind of reel that back and, and start to not apply it to the sky and just apply it to the parts of the photo that we want.